Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Oh, you missed it. I hit the record button just a little bit too late. I let out a very weird burp right before I hit record. Sorry you had to miss it. Okay, so we are at the top of page 164. People, we are like less than a month away from the end of the bees. What's going to happen after that? I have no idea. So, top of page 164. First word is bum, B-U-M. This is the fifth form. If you're so confused as to why this is the fifth form, well, that's because you didn't listen to the last episode. So what are you doing? Go back. Listen to that one. But if you haven't listened from the beginning, go do that instead. So this is a noun from 1863. It is just a drinking spree. Uh, And then the synonym is bender. Uh, Okay. Yeah, I've heard bender. Uh, I don't know if I've heard of bum specifically in that context, but, you know, it makes sense. I'm not surprised. So now we have the sixth and final form of bum. This is a transitive verb from 1973. Synonyms are disappoint and depress. And that is often used with the word out, as in the news really bummed me out. Wow, that is an understatement, a very good uh, uh, example for this day and age. I do listen to some audio podcasts, some news podcasts each morning. Uh, I follow the news a little bit, not as much as I should, more than I used to. And it just bums me out. The things that I'm hearing about really just bum me out. Um, So on that note, let's move on to Bumbershoot. B-U-M-B-E-R-S-H-O-O-T. Noun from circa 1896. Uh, And we just have the synonym umbrella. So where is this from? This is from bumber, which is an alternative of umb, U-M-B-R, from umbrella, plus shoot, which is an alternative of shoot, C-H-U-T-E, like parachute. Huh. So I wonder if this was the first name for umbrellas. Um, But it's... But, but Bumber is from Umbrella, but so Umbrella maybe came first. Which came first, the Umbrella or the Bumber Shoot? I don't know, uh, but that's interesting. I've heard of this. I don't think I realized it was f- an Umbrella. So we've learned a couple fun words for Umbrellas. Some people call them, I think we came across Brawlies, um, and then Bumber Shoot. So next we have Bumble, first form, intransitive verb from the 15th century, Number one, synonym is buzz, B-U-Z-Z. And then number two, synonyms are drone and rumble. Uh, This is from Middle English, bumblin, which means to boom. Now we have the second form of bumble. This is a verb from 1532. First is intransitive. One, synonym is blunder. Specifically, to speak ineptly, in a stuttering and faltering manner. I know that I do this. I bumble about when I am speaking of things off the cuff, uh, you know, like I did probably at the end of the last episode. Um, But that's why I love having this sort of script that I can just read straight. Uh, Okay, number two, to proceed unsteadily. Synonym is stumble. And then transitive, synonym is bungle, B-U-N-G-L-E. Bumbler is a noun, and bumblingly is an adverb. Next is bumblebee, noun from 1530. Any of numerous large, robust, hairy social bees. Oh, I think it's so funny that they're called robust, hairy social bees. I don't know why. Um, Then the genus name is Bombus. I have never heard of their their genus name before. Bombus, B-O-M-B-U-S. Large, robust, hairy social bees. Next is bumboat. Bum- oh, it's just bumboat. I don't know why. I was focusing on the phonetic part. Bumboat. One word, noun from 1769. A boat that brings provisions and commodities for sale to larger ships in port or offshore. This is probably from the lower German bumboot, which is from bum, which means tree, plus boot, which means boat. So it basically means tree boat, but I still don't understand why that is because they were bringing provisions and commodities. Is it like they're bringing the tree, the thing that gives 
stuff that they are like metaphorically they're bringing the tree i don't know seems odd but you know that's the thing bum boat next we have bump b u m f or b u m p h noun from circa 1889 it is chiefly british and the synonym is paperwork i got a bunch of bump in front of me so this is um from bump b u m f which means toilet paper uh, maybe that's a British thing that they call toilet paper bump. Uh, it is short for bump fodder. Uh, and yeah, that's all that it's telling me. Um, so next we have bummer first form noun from 1855. And the definition just says one that bums. They are a bummer. Noun. Oh, I read that this is probably modified from the German bumler which means loafer, and from bummeln, which means to dangle or loaf. Uh, next, we have the second form of bummer. It is a noun from 1966. One, an unpleasant experience as a bad reaction to a hallucinogenic drug. That is the part in parentheses. Uh, that uh, reaction was a bummer. But, you know, it's about lots of things. Any Anytime something disappoints you, like, oh, well, that... TV show or movie wasn't as good as I was expecting it to be, that was a bummer. Um, you know, whatever it is. Um, and then number two, synonyms are failure and flop. Next is bump, B-U-M-P, first form, noun from 1581. One, a, rela- a relatively abrupt convexity or protuberance on a surface as 1A, a swelling of tissue. Uh, 1B, a cranial protuberance. Uh, so, you know, we've all had bumps on our head or whatever. I've, I've got a couple bumps that are probably just, you know, not problematic cysts or whatever they are. Um, but when I think of this, uh, especially this definition, I think of a time from my childhood it has nothing to do with me. Um, I, we were watching the uh, the Chicago Bulls play probably in the you know in one of their playoffs or championship games I don't remember which one it was but it was in the 90s and Scotty Pippen got bumped on the head by somebody's elbow or knee or something hard because in what felt like seconds I mean it was probably just a few minutes really he got the most strange bump on his forehead that I have ever seen uh, I may have to actually find a picture of this and post it on Instagram because I was I was aghast at this bump. It was so it didn't look real. It looked like a really really bad um, uh, movie makeup thing on somebody's head, and it just it was looked like there was no way that this bump could have happened in real life, but it did. I mean, and it grew so fast. It was the strangest thing. Uh, Hey, Scotty Pippen, if you're listening, uh, call me up and explain to me what happened there. And then what you had to do to make it go away. Do you just have to wait? Anyway, that was a fun tangent. Now we are on number 2A for bump, a sudden forceful blow, impact, or jolt. 2B, synonym is demotion. And number 3, an act of thrusting the hips forward in an erotic manner. Whoa, um... Okay, yeah, we're just going to move on from there. Um, By the way, the etymology says it is probably from the sound of a blow, like, you know, the hit of something hitting your skull or something like that. Now we have the second form of bump. It is a verb from 1581, starting with transitive. One, to strike or knock with force or violence. Two, to collide with. Three, A, one, to dislodge with a jolt. 3A2. Oop, I had a little burp and a hiccup uh, that I kept very silent. So 3A2, to subject to a scalar change, as in rates being bumped up. 3B, to oust usually by virtue of seniority or, uh, or, I lost my line, seniority or priority, as in was bumped from the flight. Uh... Luckily, I don't think I've ever been bumped from a flight, but that sounds pretty sucky. 
Now we have intransitive. One, to knock against something with a forceful jolt. Number two, to proceed in or as if in a series of bumps. Number three, to encounter something that is an obstacle or hindrance, as in bumped up against a chair. Bump into is a phrase that we have here, and that means to encounter, especially by chance. Next, we have bumper. First form, noun from 1676. One, a brimming cup or glass. Number two, something unusually large. They call that a bumper? Um, So this is probably from the word bump, which means to bulge. Uh, Okay. Next, we have the second form of bumper, adjective from 1885. One, unusually large. We see that again, as in a bumper crop. Ah, so that's what they mean by that. Uh, Number two, we have the number two definition for the word banner, B-A-N-N-E-R. Third form of bumper, noun from 1839. One, a device for absorbing shock or preventing damage, as in collision. Specifically, a bar at either end of an automobile. Uh, Yeah, you all know what the bumpers are in a car. Uh, Number two, one that bumps. Number three, a brief interval on radio or television filled with music, video shots, or voiceovers that marks a break between a program and a commercial. Next, we have bumper car, noun from 1959. A small electric car made to be driven around in an enclosure and to be bumped into others, as at an amusement park. I'm assuming most or all of you have been on a bumper car at some point. They're a lot of fun. Uh, You know, sometimes some are not as good as others. You want to get some good speed. I can't tell you how many times I've been in one and it just, like, doesn't work. It's like I hit the the pedal and it just doesn't go. Um, But, yeah, when you get a a good bump going, those, those can be a lot of fun. I can't even remember the last time I was on a bumper car. Next, we have bumper sticker. Two words, noun from 1967. A strip of adhesive paper or plastic bearing a printed message and designed to be stuck on a vehicle's bumper. Although, people put them all over the place. Uh, Let's see. Yeah, I've seen some good bumper stickers. Uh, I had one when I had an, an old car in high school. I had one that had a quote from Einstein that said, imagination is more important than knowledge. I think I had another one that said something like, why be normal? And I put it on the where my one of my side mirrors had been because it had gotten broken. Uh, so I just it was like a square uh, sticker. So I just put it there. Um, yeah, they're fun. I mean, I don't. I, they, yeah, I have another one that I'm not going to put anywhere. Uh, that's a political message, but I'm going to keep that to myself. Next, we have bumper to bumper. Three words with hyphens, adjective from 1938, marked by long, closed lines of cars. Uh, Weird Al has a song about traffic, and there's one part where he says bumper to bumper over and over again. So maybe I'll put in a clip here. Next, we have bumpkin, B-U-M-P-K-I-N. This is the last word of the episode. Um, It is the first form noun from 1570. An awkward and unsophisticated rustic. What is a rustic, though? That's, I I mean, I know rustic as an adjective. Um, Bumpkin, let's see, this is from Dutch bumpkin, which is a small cask from Middle Dutch, Middle Dutch bom, which means cask. Okay, and then a bumpkinish is an adjective, and bumpkinly is an adjective. And then finally, we have the second form of bumpkin, uh, could be with or without the p. This is a noun from nine, uh, no circa 1632, a spar projecting from a ship, especially uh, at the stern. And this is probably from Dutch boomken. These are both of these bumpkin words are from different Dutch words. Uh, let's double check that there isn't a different word uh, language that starts with D. I'm pretty sure it's just Dutch, right? D, Dutch. Yeah, okay. 
Uh, so it's probably from the Dutch word boomken, which is a diminutive of boom, which means tree. So it's it's a tree. So we had bum, bumbershoot, bumble, bumblebee, bumboat, bump, bummer, bump, bumper, bumper car, bumper sticker, bumper to bumper, bumpkin. Um, I guess I'll pick bumper sticker as the word of the episode because I kind of like the idea of, you know, this goes along also with uh, t-shirts, uh, e- even masks nowadays, where you are able to, if you so choose, um, to give the world a little bit of information about yourself. You know, you can learn a lot about somebody by uh, you know, maybe the, the sort of graphic t-shirt that they're wearing or the bumper sticker that they've got on their car. Um, and, you know, you know, that's obviously your choice if you want to put that out there in the world. But if you do, uh, you know, people can learn something about you right away. And, uh, you know, that could be good. It could be bad, depending on who's seen it. Um, but, you know, it's just your way of being yourself and putting your personality out there in the world. Uh, so I think I think it's kind of a fun way to do that. And if there's some humor in there, I like that as well. So we're going to end the episode. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. So let's talk about the words. The last couple episodes have been on the longer side, so maybe I can keep this one short. Although, probably not. The first word is bump off. Two words, transitive verb from 1907, to murder casually or cold-bloodedly. Just bump them off like like it's nothing. Next we have bumptious. Bump with a T-I-O-U-S at the end. Bumptious. Adjective from 1803. Uh presumptuously let's make sure i'm reading this word correctly and i have to reposition this book on my lap uh presumptuously obtusely and often noisily self-assertive and a synonym synonym is obtrusive bumptiously is an adverb and bumptiousness is a noun next we have bumpy adjective from 1865 one having or covered with bumps to a marked by bumps or jolts like when you're driving down a bumpy road to be marked by or full of difficulties marked by or full of difficulties bumpily is an adverb and bumpiness is a noun next we have bum rush two words with a hyphen transitive verb from 1987 to attack or seize with an overpowering rush as in bum rush the stage Next, we have bums rush. Two words, so this is slightly different than the last one. This is a noun from 1904. Forcible eviction or dismissal. Next, we have the word bun, B-U-N. First form, a noun from the 14th century. One, a sweet or plain small bread, especially a round roll. Number two, a knot of hair shaped like a bun. Uh, and, of course, we can think of uh, Princess Leia from the Star Wars. Uh, I don't... Yeah, I think it was in the first movie she had the buns. I don't know if it was anything past that. Um, let's see. Number three is plural, and we have the synonym buttocks. So I think this is at least the third word recently that we've had that has the synonym of, like, butt or buttocks or something like that. We had bun, bum with an M, not an N, and we also had um, buck, was it? Something like that. Um, okay, so bun, and now second form of bun. This is a noun from 1898, and it's the number four definition for the word load. Okay, we'll find out what that is when we get there. Next, we have buna, or just buna, B-U-N-A, noun from 1936, any of several rubbers, made by polymerization or co-polymerization of butadine. Uh, No idea what that is, uh, but did they just call it uh, buna for short? Next, we have bunch, first form, noun from the 14th century. One, synonyms are protuberance and swelling. Uh, 2A, a number of things of the same kind, as in a bunch of grapes. To be, synonym, uh, no, it's the 2A definition for the word group, as in a bunch of friends. Uh, to see, 
a considerable amount. Synonym is lot, L-O-T, as in a bunch of money, something most of us do not have. Bunchily is an adverb and bunchy is an adjective. Next is the second form of bunch. It is a verb from the 14th century. First is intransitive. Number one, synonyms are swell and protrude. Number two, to form a group or cluster, often used with the word up. Okay, I'm going to bunch up you guys together, and I'm going to bunch up you guys together. And then the transitive definition says to form into a bunch. Next is bunchberry, noun from 1845. I've not have heard of a, a bunchberry. Uh, I've heard of a booberry. Uh, So this one is a creeping perennial herb of the dogwood family that has whorled leaves and white floral bracts and bears clusters and bears clusters of red berries. Uh, It it has clusters. It 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 creates clusters of red berries. Uh, And the scientific name is Cornus canadensis. It's a bunch. There's the berries are in bunches. That's what's a very creative name. A bunch berry. Uh, Next we have bunch grass. One word, noun from 1836, any of various grasses, um, especially of the western U.S. that grow in tufts. And man, I don't know why, but sometimes this just makes me yawn. Uh, It went away for a while, and now it's back. The genus name of bunch grass is Andropogon, or Andropogon. I don't know, that sounds like a cool, like a dragon name or something. Andropogon. All right, next we have Bunko. It could be spelled B-U-N-C-O or a K instead of the C. Noun from 1872, a swindling game or scheme. And Bunko is also a transitive verb. So this is probably an alternative of the Spanish word banca, which means a bench or banking or bank in gambling. Uh, also from Italian, probably the same word. And there's more at the word bank. Next, we have bund, B-U-N-D, first form, noun from 1810. One, an embankment used especially in India to control the flow of, the flow of water. Uh, number two, an embanked thoroughfare along a river or the sea, especially in the Far East. And this is a, um, it's from the Hindi word bond. Also from the Urdu word bond. Um, Well, they're both spelled B-A-N-D, but one of them has a dot over the N. The Hindi one has a dot over the N. Uh, It's also from a Persian word. Next, we have the second form of bund. This is, oh, you could say bund, uh, bund, bunt. A few words, a few ways to pronounce it. This is a noun from 1850. A political association as a... A Jewish Jewish social oh, I, I cannot say this. A Jewish socialist organization founded in Tsarist Russia in 1897, and B, a pro-Nazi German-American organization of the 1930s, and Bundist or Bundist is a noun and is often capitalized. Uh, so this is from the Yiddish word Bund. Um, it's also a German word Bund with a capital B from the Middle High German word bunt, which is akin to the Old English bindel, um, and that's all it is giving me. Uh, so, yeah, that now you know what that is. Now we have the word bundle, first form, noun from the 14th century. 1A, a group of things fastened together for convenient handling. Uh, 1B, synonyms are package and parcel. 1C, a considerable number. Synonym is lot. I have a lot of things that I will put, I will bunch up into this bundle. 1D, a sizable sum of money. 1E, a person embodying a specified quality or characteristic. 1F, we have the number two definition for the word bunch. Yes, you can bunch things into a bundle or bundle them into a bunch. 2A, a small band of mostly parallel fibers as of nerve or muscle. B- a bundle of fibers in your body. Uh, to B, we have the synonym vascular bundle. 
Number three, a package offering related products or services at a single price. Uh, yes, if you, I've I've bought a few things online that way. Like uh, I think I even bought my uh, my audio recorder this way. There was a bundle. Um, you could also, you know, there was a, there was the recorder and then an SD card. And then I think there was a little stand for the recorder, which I don't use. And I think there were headphones. Um, I had to buy the microphone and the cable separately, but yeah, it came in a bundle. Those are great. You often get a little bit of a deal. Um, where were we? So, oh, this is from, uh, let's see, old English bindel, which means bundle from bindon, which means bind. Moving on to the second form of bundle, it is a verb from 1611. Transitive is first, one, to make into a bundle. Two, to hustle or hurry unceremoniously, as in, bundle the children off to school. You just get them out the door. Number three, to include a product or service with a related, excuse me, with a related product for sale at a single price. Sorry, I just had some food before I recorded, so it's, it's you know, I think I'm just digesting it. Uh, now we have the intransitive definitions. Number one, hurry. Uh, synonyms are hurry and hustle. And number two, to practice bundling. Bundler is a noun. And then finally, we have bundle up. Two words. This is the last for this episode. Verb from 1845. Transitive is first, which says to dress warmly. And then there's an example of a person. To dress someone warmly. And then uh, the intransitive is to dress warmly. So in the first case, you are dressing somebody else. So they are very bundled up and warm, like in winter. And then the other one, you are dressing yourself warmly. So we had bump off, bumptious, bumpy, bum rush, bums rush, bun, buna, bunch, uh, bunchberry, bunch grass, bunko, bund, or bunt, bundle, and bundle up. Uh, hmm. There wasn't anything that really jumped out at me. Um, let's see. I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess we will just pick, um, I don't know, bumptious as the word of the episode because it's a fun word and the words that were used to describe it were fun and Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay, this has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Thank you and goodbye. Hello, word nerds. We are right in the center of page 164. So our first word is bundling. B-U-N-D-L-I-N-G. This is a noun from 1781. A former custom of an unmarried couples occupying the same bed without undressing, especially during courtship. Bundling a former custom. Okay, this is very old, obviously. Um, Unmarried couples occupying the same bed without undressing. So basically, it's just uh, possibly two people while they're starting to date back, uh, you know, over 200 years ago. uh, They would sleep in the same bed, but they would stay dressed. That's bundling. Next is BUNT, capital B-U-N-D-T. This is a trademark. And it is used for a cake pan having a tube in the center and scalloped side sides. Uh, so this is for making bunt cakes. I don't think I realized that bunt was a trademark. I think it was just a, a, the name of a type of cake. Um, but yeah, the, why I don't understand like where this design came from. Was there some logistical way reason why it was designed that way with the hole in the middle? I'm not entirely sure. I mean, they look kind of fun, but yeah, it's just an interesting cake. Uh, Next, we have bung, B-U-N-G. This is the first form noun from the 15th century. One, the stopper, especially in the bunghole of a cask. Uh, And then we can look at the synonym bunghole, which is coming up. Um, And that's just, it's just the the hole of a thing. Uh, And then number two, this uh, the cecum or anus, especially of a slaughtered animal. Um, again, it's the whole of a thing, and uh, yeah, I I don't know about a lot about the slaughtered animals, so I can't speak to that. I mean, I've heard it used as the anus of a thing, but you know, I don't. It that's more of a slang term. Um, 
Now we have the second form of bung. It is a transitive verb from 1589. One, to plug with or as if with a bung. And then number two is British. We have the number one definition for the word throw. Uh, next we have bungalow. This is a noun from 1676. A one-storied house with a low-pitched roof. Also, a house having one and a half stories and usually a front porch. Well, we have some of these in the town I live in, but what I, I didn't know is where this name came from. It is a, a hint from the Hindi and Urdu words, uh, Bangla, which uh, literally means house in the Bengal style. Uh, so that's kind of cool. I had no clue about that. Uh, maybe we can find examples of these officially Bengal style houses. Uh, yeah. Next, we have bungee cord, noun from 1948. An elasticized cord, elasticized cord, used especially as a fastening or shock absorbing device, called also just bungee. Um, you have to be careful about these. Uh, you have to make sure that they are attached very well and that uh, the things that they are holding don't, you know, fall apart or get unattached in some way, because if those things get detached, they can fly out and smack you in the face and really hurt you. So be careful with bungee cords, please. Just, just all you have to do is just make sure that they're fastened good. Next, we have bungee jump. This is an intransitive verb from 1990. To jump from a height while attached to an elasticized cord and bungee jumper is a noun. I have been a bungee jumper once. I went bungee jumping, and I, was, um, I wasn't I was really nervous because I knew that everything would be fine, uh, but then right at the moment of getting ready to jump, I was like, oh, yeah, this is nuts. <laughs> uh, but I did it, and it was fun, and uh, there were no problems, really, and uh, I survived. So that was, it was, and it was, it was in a beautiful area, so that was cool, too. Next is a bunghole. This is the one we were talking about before. This is a noun from 1571. A hole for emptying or filling a cask. So that could be like a holder of like wine or beer or some sort of liquid. Um, I don't really know where... They don't have the etymology of why it's called a bunghole, where the word bung comes from exactly. Um, I guess if we go back to the word bung, it does say it's um, from Middle English or Middle Dutch bon or bong, B-O-N-G-H-E, but that that's all, that's as far as it goes. I mean, they don't, there's not a more specific uh, etymology for that, so that's all we got. Uh, next, we have bungle, verb from uh, 1549, starting with intransitive, to act or work clumsily and awkwardly. Transitive, Synonyms are mishandle and botch, as in bungle a job. Bungle is a noun, bungler is a noun, and bunglingly is an adverb. Uh, and this is perhaps of Scandinavian origin, and it is akin to the Icelandic word banga, which means to hammer. Uh, with, I'm not really sure how that makes sense here. I mean, I guess if you hammer something, you've mishandled it. I don't know. That doesn't really make any sense. But it is possibly akin to that word. Next, we have bunglesome, adjective from circa 1889. Synonyms are awkward and clumsy. Next is bung up. Two words, transitive verb from 1951. Synonym is batter, B-A-T-T-E-R. Is that like when you're the, the person who swings a bat is the batter or the stuff that you bake or cook from this batter? Mm, no, I'm not sure. Um, neither one of those makes sense to me. But next we have the word bunion, noun from circa 1718. An inflamed swelling of the small fluid-filled sac on the first joint of the big toe accompanied by enlargement and protrusion of the joint. I really hope I never get one of these. They don't look like they're so fun. Uh, let's see, this is a probably an alternative alternative of the word bunny, B-U-N-N-Y, which means swelling? I don't know of bunny meaning swelling, but uh, let's see. 
Are we going to get to that in the next episode? Well, Bunny is in there, but it doesn't have anything to do with swelling. All right. Um, let's see. So that was Bunyan. And I wonder if there's anything you can do to avoid getting Bunyans. Um, I mean, it's inflamed. It's swelled up. Um, is it? Is there something about being on your feet too much or not enough? Or is it exercising? Is it, is it eating right? Can you avoid Bunyans? Maybe we should find out. Next, we have the word bunk, B-U-N-K, first form, noun from 1758, 1A, bunk bed, 1B, a built-in bed as on a ship that is often you uh, often one of a tier of berths, B-E-R-T-H-S. Uh, so yes, often more than one bunk in a, a situation like that, in a, a submarine, a boat, whatever it is. Uh, 1C, a sleeping place. Number two, a feeding trough for farm animals and especially cattle. And this is probably short for the word bunker. Next is the second form of bunk, verb from 1840, to occupy a bunk or bed. Stay the night, as in bunked with a friend for the night. And then transitive says to provide with a bunk or bed. Next is the third form of bunk, noun from 1900, Synonyms are bunkum and nonsense. And we will be getting to bunkum in the next episode. Next is the fourth form of bunk, noun from circa 1870. It is British and it means a hurried departure or escape, used usually in the phrase do a bunk. Yeah, I'm not British, so I'm not familiar with this, but that's what they say. Next we have bunk bed, noun from 1924. One of two single beds, usually placed one above the other. I had a bunk bed when I was a kid. That was great. Next, we have bunker, first form, noun from 1839. One, a bin or compartment for storage, especially one on shipboard for the ship's fuel. Two, a, a protective embankment or dugout, especially a fortified chamber mostly below ground, often built uh, of reinforced concrete and provided with embrasures. Uh, To be a sand trap or embankment constituting a hazard on a golf course. Bunkered is an adjective. And this is from, let's see, I think SC is Scottish. Yes, Scottish. Uh, From the Scottish word bonker, which means chest or box. Second form of bunker is a verb from 1891. First is intransitive. To fill a ship's bunker with coal or oil. Transitive, number one, to place or store in a bunker. Number two, to hit a golf ball or shot into a bunker. Now we have bunker mentality. Two words, noun from 1976. A state of mind, especially among members of a group, that is characterized by chauvinistic defensiveness and self-righteous intolerance of criticism. A state of mind, especially among members of a group that is characterized by chauvinistic defensiveness and self-righteous intolerance of criticism. Oh, well, there's a lot going on there. Um, we are, we're not going to touch that one. And then lastly, we've got Bunkhouse, noun from 1876, a rough, simple building providing sleeping quarters. So we had bundling, bunt, bung, bungalow, bungee cord, bungee jump, bunghole, bungle, bunglesome, bung up, bunion, bunk, bunk bed, bunker, bunker mentality, and bunk house. Um, oh, I was debating between bungee jump and bunk bed as the word of the episode, you know, they're pretty, uh, pretty tame um, from what we could pick. Um, let's see. I, I don't know. I'll pick bunk bed as the word of the episode. Like I said, I had a bunk bed when I was a kid. Um, it was, I was, it was cool to have a bunk bed. I don't know. I don't know why adults don't have bunk beds. Why, why, why don't we do this? We, what have we lost our sense of childlike wonder and playfulness? I don't know. Also, why are they always single beds? Why couldn't they be like double or queen size beds? Will the will the uh, if it's too big, will it not hold the weight? Um, but that would be cool for some reason. I don't know. 
Um, also, my bunk bed was cool because you could take it apart. Uh, so uh, for a while after I had it set up as two beds, I took the top part off. So it had these like long legs. Um, you know, they were just like pipes that fit in, fit into each other. And so we took that part off and set it up as a whole separate bed. And uh, because it was like a good maybe three or four feet off the ground, uh, you could have like a little fort under there. And I thought that was kind of cool. Um, but yeah, so have fun with your your room set up and have a bunk bed and make a fort and I don't know, just had to do that's fun, good times. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the podcast called The Dictionary. We are at the end of page 164. First word is bunkum. B-U-N-K-U-M. Could also be spelled B-U-N-C-O-M-B-E. Uh, so this is a noun from 1845. Insincere or foolish talk. Synonym is nonsense. So this is from Buncombe County, North Carolina. Uh, let's see. That is using the second spelling. Um, it is from a remark made by its congressman who defended an irre- irrelevant speech by claiming that he was speaking to Buncombe. Um, so he I, he claimed that he was speaking to his county, um, but it was irrelevant and it didn't make any sense, maybe. I don't know. I might have to look more into this one. Next, we have Bunny, B-U-N-N-Y, noun from circa 1690. One synonym is rabbit, especially a young rabbit. Number two, a desirable young woman. Uh, I'm not surprised that people use this word for that because that's because people are people. Uh, but yeah, I guess people say that. Um, and then this is from the English dialect word bun, which means rabbit. Next, we have bunny slope. Two words, noun from 1966. Oh, regarding bunny i just wanted to say that one of my favorite lines which is like it's not even a really a line um in the movie nightmare before christmas uh jack has these little kids go get santa but instead they get the easter bunny and he hops out of this bag that they caught him in and this one character who has only really a couple of lines in the movie um he just looks at the easter bunny and goes bunny and that's it i just for some reason really enjoy that part so whenever i see a rabbit in my neighborhood i go bunny okay next is bunny slope noun from 1966 a gentle incline for skiing used especially by novice skiers called also bunny hill next is bunraku capital b-u-n-r-a-k-u noun from 1920 Japanese puppet theater featuring large costumed wooden puppets, puppeteers who are on stage, and a chanter who speaks all the lines. Uh, And this is a Japanese word. I saw some puppetry. I think it was Japanese puppetry, although I don't know if it was bunraku. It was very interesting. It was where uh, somebody sat on a little box with wheels. I think it had wheels on it. And then they attach the puppet's feet to their feet, I think. And uh, maybe there were little poles for their hands. Um, and uh, I don't know, it was very cool and well done. So you, you see the puppeteer, but you just completely forget that they're there. Um, and I, I just thought it was really fascinating. I wish I could remember what name, uh, what style of puppetry that was, if it wasn't Bunraku. I can't remember. I should go find out. Okay, next is Bunsen Burner. Noun from 1860, a gas burner consisting typically of a straight tube with small holes at the bottom with where air enters and mixes with the gas to produce an intensely hot blue flame. And this is from Robert W. Bunsen. Uh, you know, most people in science classes, especially in high school and up, uh, they get to play with Bunsen burners. And when I say play, I mean do very serious scientific scientific tasks and experiments. Uh, but yeah, they're they're a very standard part of science when we think of science, even though they might not necessarily be used. Next, we have bunt, b-u-n-t, first form noun from circa 1582, 
1A, the middle part of a square sail. 1B, the part of a furled sail gathered up in a bunch at the center of the yard. 2, the bagging part of a fishing net. Next, we have the second form of bunt verb from 1584. Uh, This is um, transitive is first. 1, to strike or push with or as if with the head. And a synonym is butt, like like headbutt, I guess. Uh, number two, to push or tap a baseball lightly with a bat without swinging. All of you baseball fans probably know this, but yeah, instead of full, doing a full swing, if you just hold the bat out there and you hit it, uh, hit the ball right, um, that's called a bunt, and it can be used when done well, very, very strategically in baseball. Um, and then we have intransitive. Uh, we just It just says to bunt a baseball, and bunter is a noun. Third form of bunt, noun from 1767. One, an act or instance of bunting. Number two, a bunted ball. Fourth form of bunt, noun from circa 1790. A destructive cov- covered smut of wheat caused by a fungus. A destructive covered smut of wheat caused by a fungus. I don't know what a smut of wheat is. I have not used, I have not heard of that word used in that context. Uh, but I think the fungus genus name is Teletia, or or maybe the wheat name is Teletia. I don't know. It's probably the fungus name. Anyway, that's what that bunt is. Moving on to bunting, first form, noun from the 14th century. Any of various stout build passerine birds, of which some are grouped with the cardinal and some with the New World sparrows, compared to the synonyms indigo bunting and painted bunting. And the family names are cardinalidae and emberizidae. Uh, second form of bunting, noun from 1711. 1. A lightweight, loosely woven fabric used chiefly for flags and festive decorations. 2a. Synonym is flags. 2b. Decorations, especially in the colors of the national flag. Um, etymology says this is from bunt, which means to sift. Not sure where that fits in here. Moving on to the third form of bunting, noun from 1922. An infant's hooded garment made of napped fabric. And this is a term of endearment in the nursery rhyme, by baby bunting. Uh, so you're saying bye to the hooded garment of the baby? Why? Maybe we should find this nursery rhyme and check out the lyrics. Uh, next is bunt line. Noun from 1627. One of the lines attached to the foot of a square sail to haul the sail up to the yard for furling. Lots of sailing words, verbiage in there that I don't know. Next is Bunyanesque, capital B-U-N-Y-A-N-E-S-Q-U-E. Adjective from 1888, number one, of relating to or suggestive of the allegorical writings of John Bunyan. Uh, Number two, slightly differently, uh, 2A, of relating to or suggestive of the tales of Paul Bunyan. John Bunyan and Paul Bunyan. I was not familiar with John Bunyan. Um, And then we've got 2B, of fantastically large size, because famously Paul Bunyan was so, so big. Um, And then, yeah, it just says Paul Bunyan, uh, legendary giant lumberjack of U.S. and Canada. That's the etymology for number two. And the etymology for number one just says John Bunyan. So let's find out who John Bunyan is. And then we have Bunya virus. B-U-N-Y-A virus, one word, noun from 1985. Any of a family of usually spherical or pleomorphic single-stranded RNA viruses usually transmitted by the bite of an arthropod uh, as a mosquito or in the bodily secretions of rodents, and including the hantaviruses and the causative agents of Rift Valley fever, sandfly fever, and some forms of encephalitis 
and hemorrhagic fever. Wow, there's a lot going on there. Uh, so the family name is Bunyaviridae. And let's see, the etymology says this is from Bunya, which is from Banyamwera, which is a locale in western Uganda where the virus was isolated in 1943. Um, that's that. And then they added a uh, virus to the end of that. And then our last word is buoy. B-U-O-Y. It is the first form. The second form will be in the next episode. Noun from the 13th century. One is, we just have the number two definition for the word float. Uh, especially a floating object moored to the bottom to mark a channel or something lying under the water. And then an, ex- an example of something that's lying under the water is a shoal. S-O-S-H-O-A-L. Man, my mouth is not making the words that I want to make today. Um, And then number two, synonym is life buoy. This is from Middle English. Boye, I don't know how to pronounce it. B-O-Y-E, probably from Middle Dutch. Boye, akin to the Old High German buhan, which means sign. And there's more at the word beacon. So we had bunkum, bunny, bunny slope, bunraku, bunts and burner, bunt, Bunting, bunt line, bunyanesque, bunya virus, and buoy. Well, I'm a little torn between bunraku and bunsen burner. Maybe I'll just pick both of them as the words of the episode because I can do whatever I want. Um, bunsen burner is important just because I think it had a really uh, beneficial. Uh, it was very beneficial to science, and it, it allowed people to do science in a different way than they had probably done before. I don't know the history of the Bunsen burner, but maybe I'll put in a link from Wikipedia or something, uh, because I think it's is probably important. Um, and then Bunraku, I just I I do love puppetry. I am not an expert by any means. I don't follow it as closely as I'd like to because I'm a very very busy person. Um, but I find it fascinating and I love seeing different styles of it and uh, you know what people create in puppetry is really beautiful and awesome uh, so yeah Bunraku and Bunsen Burner are the words of the episode thank you very much for listening I do appreciate all of you a uh, small number of people who are listening uh, please tell everybody about it please 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 rate it and review it it helps me uh, get up in those charts charts which I am not in and it gets more exposure. And uh, I don't know. I think it's fun. I think if you if you want to contact me, you can uh, email me at dictionarypod at gmail.com. Or you can go to at dictionarypod on Twitter or Instagram and message me there. Uh, there's other links there and such. So thank you very much for listening. This has been Spencer dispensing information to you from me. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to... The dictionary. Why does this sound like the headphones are so low? That's the wrong direction. Uh, okay, so uh, let's see. We are at the top of page 165. Today, the first word is buoy. It is the second form. B-U-O-Y. Verb from 1596. And uh, let's see. We are starting with transitive. Number one, to mark by or as if by a buoy. To A, to keep afloat. To be. Synonyms are support and uplift. As in, an economy buoyed by the dramatic post war growth of industry. And that is a quote from Time magazine. Number three, to raise the spirits of, usually used with the word up. As in, hope buoys him up. And then the one intransitive definition has the synonym float. And that is also usually used with the word up. Next is buoyance, noun from 1793, and the synonym is buoyancy, which just happens to be our next word, but we have a picture of a buoy, which is actually, I very much screwed this up. I am so, so sorry, people. Uh, This is actually the buoy from the last episode, the first form. Um, it's just it's just a picture of a couple of different kinds of buoys floating in the water, minding their own business, not doing anything, just hanging out. 
Uh, let's see. One of them has some sort of rectangular shaped notches in the top, and one of them has a pointed top. They're probably orange or red or white or some bright color, but it's a black and white drawing, so I can't tell the color. Uh, so yeah, that is buoy. Uh, and then, so buoyancy is next. This is a noun from 1713, 1A. The tendency, the tendency of a body to float or to rise when submerged in a fluid. 1B, the power of a fluid to exert an upward force on a body placed in it. Also, the upward force exerted. Uh, number two, the ability to recover quickly from depression or discouragement. Synonym is resilience. Number three, the property of maintaining a satisfactorily high level as of prices or economic activity. I don't think I have much buoyancy. I'm not sure why. Uh, this actually leads into our next word, buoyant. I don't think I am very buoyant for some reason. Everybody says, oh yeah, you can float, but I don't know. It feels like I don't float so good. <laughs> I'm not sure why. I'm very dense. Uh, all right, so buoyant is our next word adjective from 1578, having buoyancy as A, capable of floating, and B, synonyms are cheerful and gay. Uh, and then we have a C, uh, capable of maintaining a satisfactorily high level, and that is similar to one of the ones in the last word, um, as in a buoyant economy. Buoyantly is an adverb. And there might be a sneeze in my future. Mm. Okay, so next we have bupkis, spelled B-U-P-K-E-S or B-U-P-K-U-S. And this is just a variation of bubkis with a B instead of a P. Next we have buppy, B-U-P-P-I-E, noun from 1984, a college-educated black adult who is employed in a well-paying profession and who lives or works in or near a large city. I genuinely don't think I've ever seen this before. Uh, th this is combining the words black and yuppie, and you get buppy. I've heard of yuppie, which I think... Oh, now I can't even remember where that word comes from. Um, it's, it's, oh, I think it's like young urban professional. I think that, and then they just, you know, extended it to yuppie. So Y-U-P, young urban professional, uh, young person, man, I feel like that phrase, that word doesn't get used much anymore. But, uh, growing up, I heard this a lot, but I guess, I, uh, one who is black would be called a buppy. Uh, yeah. Interesting. Okay. We are, I, again, don't think this gets used anymore. Uh, we are moving on to bur, B-U-R, first form, variation of bur with two R's, uh, which we will get to later. Second form of bur is an abbreviation for bureau, B-U-R-E-A-U. -E Next, we have burb, B-U-R-B, noun from 1971, and the synonym is suburb, and this is usually used in plural, like I live in the burbs. Uh, also, a great movie, The Burbs. Haven't seen it since I was a kid, but I really, really want to. It was a fun sort of horror comedy with Tom Hanks and others. Next is Burberry, capital B-U-R, and then the word berry. Uh, Burberry, 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 a few different ways to pronounce it. This is a trademark, and it is used uh, for various fabrics used especially for coats for outdoor wear. Next we have burble, B-U-R-B-L-E, first form, um, intransitive verb from the 14th century. One, to make a bubbling sound. Number two, synonyms are babble and prattle. And burbler is an amazing word, burbler. Uh, that is a noun, so that would be the one making the bubbling sound. Burble. Uh, now we have the second form of burble, noun from 1898. Number one, synonym is prattle, P-R-A-T-T-L-E. And number two, the breaking up of the smooth flow of air about a body as an airplane wing. And burbly is an adjective. Next we have burbot, 
B-U-R-B-O-T, or is it just burbot? It might just be burbot. Uh, noun from the 14th century. A holarctic, holarctic, okay, so it's the word arctic with H-O-L at the beginning. A holarctic freshwater bony fish of the cod family having barbells on the nose and chin. And the scientific name for this bony fish is Lotta Lotta, L-O-T-A, L-O-T-A, to... The, it's the same word twice. Is it lota lota or is it lada lada? I don't know. Uh, this is from Old French, borbeter, which means to stir up mud. So these cods probably, uh, you know, they get their food in the mud and at the bottom of the water and they stir it up. So that's where we got the name. Burbat, 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 I don't know. Next is the word burden. First form, noun, from, before the 12th century. 1A, something that is carried, and a synonym is load. 1B, synonyms are duty, D-U-T-Y, and responsibility. Number two, something oppressive or worrisome. 3A, the bearing of a load, and that is usually used in the phrase beast of burden. Uh, 3B, capacity for carrying cargo as in a ship of a hundred tons burden. Number four, we have the number 11 definition for the word load, L-O-A-D, as in worm burden. Uh, Yeah, that's like the worm in the ground, worm burden. Also, cancer burden. So it does not seem like a fun uh, way to use the word burden. Uh, This is from Old English, birthen, akin to the Old English baron, which means to carry. And there's more at the word bear, B-E-A-R. Next, we have the second form of burden. This is a verb from 1541. Synonyms are load and oppress, as in, I will not burden you with a lengthy account, but I will burden you with a lengthy podcast. Uh, Now we have the third form of burden. This is a noun from the 14th century. One is archaic. Uh, a base or accompanying part. That's the burden. Okay, that is very clearly archaic. Uh, 2A, synonyms are chorus and refrain. And then 2B, a central topic. Synonym is theme. This is from Anglo-French, bourdon, which is a drone base of imitative origin. All right. Next is burden of proof. Three words from 1780. The duty of proving a disputed assertion or charge. And then lastly, we have burdensome. Burden with the word sum at the end, S-O-M-E. It's all one word. Adjective from 1578. Imposing or constituting a burden. Synonym is oppressive, as in burdensome restrictions. And then another synonym is the word onerous. O-N-E-R-O-U-S. So we had buoy, buoyance, buoyancy, buoyant, bupkis, buppy, bur, bur, burb, burberry, burble, uh, burbot, burden, burden of proof, and burdensome. Well, just because I like the way it sounded, I think I have to pick burble as the word of the episode, especially the noun version burbler, and then maybe even the adjective burbly. Uh, That's all I got to say today. Thank you very much for listening, and until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Uh, Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. This is my podcast that I have where I read this book to you. It is the podcast of everything. Uh, Yes, it is. This is, that's what it is. That's the tagline. It's the podcast of everything. The everything podcast? The, I don't know. Uh, So the first word is burdock. B-U-R-D-O-C-K. It is a noun from the 15th century. Any of a genus of coarse composite herbs bearing globular flower heads with prickly bracts. And the genus name is Arctium. Next we have Bureau. Noun from 1699. 1A is British. And the synonym is writing desk. Especially one having drawers and a slant top. Next is 1B, a low chest of drawers for use in a bedroom. 2A, a specialized administrative unit, especially a subdivision of an executive department of a government. 
and then to be a branch of a newspaper, news magazine, or wire service in an important news center. To C, a usually commercial agency that serves as an intermediary, especially for exchanging information or coordinating activities, as in credit bureau. I'm curious why there is a an object called a bureau that you, it's like a desk basically, and then this whole other idea of like a department or whatever that's also called a bureau. Did the department get the name from the fact maybe that they had bureaus, as in lots of desks? Uh, I, I mean, it's possible. It seems kind of a weird stretch that they would do that. We have a lot of desks, so we're going to call this place a desk. I mean, they would use the, the word bureau. I don't know. Uh, but let's see if the etymology can give us any more information. It is French. It means desk or cloth covering, covering for desks. Uh, from Old French, burel, which means woolen cloth. Um, from Latin, bura, which means shaggy cloth. It didn't help me at all. It didn't help me to understand why these departments are called bureaus. I don't know. Okay, next we have bureaucracy. Noun from 1818. 1A, a body of non-elective government officials. 1B, an administrative policy-making group. Every time I think of bureaucracy, I think of uh, that character from Futurama. Well, of course, I cannot think of his name right now because every time I try and think of something off the top of my head, I just draw a blank. But if you've watched the show, you know exactly who I'm talking about. He loves bureaucracy. He loves the red tape. He loves filling out paperwork. Uh, Okay, number two, government characterized by specialization of functions, adherence to fixed rules, and a hierarchy of authority. I think to some extent, I kind of like the idea of this because I do like routine and rules and, you know, that sort of thing. But at the same time, I'm like, no, I don't like that. I'm very torn. Uh, Number three, a system of administration marked by officialism, red tape, and proliferation. So this is from... um, eh, The etymology is not that interesting. Next, we have bureaucrat. Noun from 1839, a member of a bureaucracy. Uh, Next, we have a word. I was having trouble pronouncing this before I recorded. Is it... Bureaucraties? Bureaucraties. So it's the word bureaucrat with E-S-E at the end. Noun from 1949. A style of language held to be characteristic of bureaucrats and marked by abstractions, jargon, euphemisms, and circumlocutions. I mean, I feel like the definition is bureaucraties. Uh, so yeah, it's basically the words and the the types of words and the way that they use the words uh, that that bureaucrats use when they are speaking to each other. Uh, next, we have bureaucratic. This is an adjective from 1836 of relating to or having the characteristics of a bureaucracy or a bureaucrat, as in bureaucratic government. And bureaucratically is an adverb. I don't really know enough about the details of this stuff to talk about it in any good sense. I mean, we have a couple more bureaucrat words, but, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a thing that happens in government, and I'm sure it's got its pros and its cons. Uh, next, we have bureaucratize. Uh, so this is with an S-E at the end, and, of course, it is the British variation of bureaucratize with a Z, which is coming up. But first, we have bureaucratism. This is a noun from 1880, and we have the number three definition for the word bureaucracy, which, again, said a system of administration marked by officialism, red tape, and proliferation. So here we go with the American bureaucratize. Bureaucratize, yeah, I think that's what it is. This is a verb from 1880. To make bureaucratic, you are bureaucratizing something. Uh, I don't know how that how you do that. Uh, bureaucratization is a noun bureaucratization what is that like six syllables or something next we are out of the bureaucrat words we now have burette b-u-r-e-t-t-e could also be just b-u-r-e-t this is a noun from 1836 
a graduated glass tube with a small aperture and stopcock, I'm not familiar with that word, stopcock, for delivering measured quantities of liquid or for measuring the liquid or gas received or discharged. Uh, so it's a glass tube with an extra hole in it that where you can more accurately measure the stuff that goes in or out. Uh, let's see. This is from Old French, bivret, which means cruet or cruet, C-R-U-E-T, from buire, bu- buire, B-U-I-R-E. I don't know how to speak French. Uh, that means pitcher, like a, like a water pitcher, and it is perhaps of Germanic origin akin to the Old English bur, which means storehouse or dwelling, and there's more at the word bower or bower. Next, we have Berg, B-U-R-G, noun from 1753, one, an ancient or medieval fortress or walled town. And number two, synonyms are city or town. Uh, And then this is from Old English, and there's more at the word borough, B-O-R-O-U-G-H. But then also the city, town, the etymology for that is actually from the German word Berg, Uh, maybe that was actually a town in Germany called Berg. I don't know. Uh, my parents have a friend who lives, lives in Southern, uh, Wisconsin, small little town called Reedsburg. And there's a lot of towns, obviously all over the, uh, the country, probably other places other than America, um, who, that they have the, the word Berg at the end of their name. Um, and so, you know, if my parents were going to visit their friends and they would say, oh, we're going to the Berg. And we all just knew what they were talking about. All right, next we have Burgage, B-U-R-G-A-G-E, Burgage, noun from the 15th century, a tenure by which real property in England and Scotland was held under the king or a lord for a yearly rent or for watching and warding. Uh, okay, so this is a Middle English. It is property held by Burgage tenure. Um, from Burke or Borg, which means town, and there's more at the word Borg, B-O-U-R-G. Um, so yeah, it's that, yeah. Okay, next we have Burgi, B-U-R-G-E-E, noun from 1750. One, a swallow-tailed flag usual, used especially by ships for signals or identification. Maybe we can find an example of this and put it on the Instagram. Number two, a usually triangular identifying flag of a yacht club. I feel like I've seen these before, uh, you know, so you you probably will recognize it. Um, But I didn't know it was called a bourgie. This is perhaps from the French dialect word uh, bourget, which means ship owner. Next we have burgeon, B-U-R-G-E-O-N, uh, you could also throw in an O at the beginning after the B. This is a verb. Uh, let's see. I think it's just intransitive from the 14th century. 1A, to send forth new growth as buds or branches. And then a synonym is sprout. Uh, 1B, synonym is bloom. Number two, to grow and expand rapidly. And a synonym is flourish. Uh, So this is from, (laughs) let's see, from Middle English, bourgeonin, from Anglo-French, bourgeonaire, from Latin bura, which means fluff or shaggy cloth. Not really sure why that makes any sense here, but I guess it does somehow. Um, Yeah, I mean, I think when I think of bourgeon, I think of, um, you know, yeah, something, something new, something being created, uh, or something growing, evolving, this burgeoning, uh, something or other. I don't know. I can't come up with a good example. But here we have the last word of the episode. It is burger, B-U-R-G-E-R, noun from 1937. Number one, synonym is just hamburger. And number two, a sandwich similar to a hamburger. Why? Oh, as in the example, tofu burgers. I don't know why you can't say a tofu hamburger, although I guess people don't really use that. We've also got turkey burgers and bison burgers and all those sorts of things. Um, And this is often used in combination, as in, like we said, tofu burger. 
I honestly don't think I've ever had a tofu burger. I mean, I've had other things that are tofu based uh, because I am vegan. I haven't had a real hamburger in many, many years. Uh, but just this past weekend, uh, from when I'm recording this, uh, we, we we wanted you know some sort of unhealthy food, burgers and fries. And there happens to be a diner you know, five or 10 minutes away from where we live that we have never been to that just a couple of years ago started selling um, vegan food, vegan versions of their food. So they've got burgers and fries and milkshakes and chili and soups and a few items. Uh, so we were like, well, I think it's time that we should go check out their vegan options. Uh, so they have their own vegan burger. I don't know if they make it or if they get it from somewhere, but they also have the new Impossible Burger. They're offering that as an option as well. So we got one of each and we got some uh, we got some fries, and it was all very good and tasty. I did kind of prefer the Impossible over the other one. Like I said, I don't know what the other one was, but they were both good. That was the last burger I had. I don't really get them super often. Uh, so let us rehash our words. We had burdock. Um, that is uh, some plant. Bureau, bureaucracy, bureaucrat, bureaucraties, bureaucratic, bureaucratize, bureaucratism, bureaucratize, burette, burg, burgage, burgy, burgeon, and burger. Uh, well, hmm, what do I do here? Should I pick the obvious burger because everybody loves a burger? Uh, there was another one that I was thinking about. Um, but I don't, I don't know. I can't think of it. So yeah, let's, that's fine. Let's just pick a burger as the word of the episode because, you know, burgers are good. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing all of the information in the entire world to you. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to, uh, the podcast about everything called the dictionary. Uh, let's see. 19, 20, 21, 22. I think today is the 21st of November. I don't know. I don't know if there's anything happening that day. Let's see. Let, let's see what day of the week that is. That is a Saturday. Uh, so I hope you're having a great Saturday if you are listening to this on the day it is airing, which uh, chances are you're not. Some of you are, but most of you are not. Okay, so the first word is Burgess, B-U-R-G-E-S-S. It is a noun from the 13th century. 1A, a citizen of a British borough. Number uh, 1B, a representative of a borough, corporate town, or university in the British Parliament. Number 2, a representative in the popular branch of the legislature of colonial Maryland or Virginia. So this is from Anglo-French. Bork, which means town. I feel like the Swedish set, chef saying it. Bork, 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 bork. Uh, and then there's more at the word Borg, B-O-U-R-G. My nose feels itchy. So next we have... All right, so this word doesn't get pronounced the way I think it should be. Uh, it is spelled B-U-R-G-H, and it tells me that it is pronounced burrow. There's no O in there, but that's how it's spelled. Um, so it's, 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 a, it's a noun from the 12th century, and the synonym is burrow, B-O-R-O-U-G-H. That one makes more sense. And then somehow it got shortened to this other spelling. Um, but specifically, after the synonym, it says specifically, an incorporated town in Scotland having local jurisdiction of certain services. And burgle is an adjective. Um, so yeah, I mean, they. I think the burrow was a, a British word. Uh, or, you know, in that area, and then the Scottish people decided to uh, change the spelling of it, I guess. Next, we have burger, but it is not the burger we had before. It is uh, B-U-R-G-H-E-R. This is a noun from the 13th century. One, an inhabitant of a borough or a town. Number two, a member of the middle class, a prosperous, solid citizen. Wow, not only are they prosperous, but they're solid. Maybe they're like me and they, they don't have very much buoyancy. They can't float because they're so solid. Uh, okay, next we have burglar, noun from 1541. One who commits burglary. Uh, this is from Middle Latin burglator, probably an alternative of burgator uh, or burgare, which means to commit burglary. Burgare, that's a Latin word. 
Uh, okay, that's burglar. Next, we have burglarize. This is a verb from 1871, starting with transitive. Number one, to break into and steal from, as in burglarize a house. Number two, to commit burglary against. And then the intransitive definition says to commit burglary. Next, we have burglar proof. Adjective from 1848, protected against or designed to afford protection against burglary. Good luck with burglar proofing your place. Uh, next, we have burglary. Noun from circa 1523, the act of breaking and entering a dwelling at night to commit a felony as theft. And then broadly, the entering of a building with the intent to commit a crime. I like that one a bit better just because the the first part of the definition said that it has that it's at night. I mean, yes, obviously they're often at night because it's harder to see people. But but but, but yeah, it doesn't have to be at night. You can burglarize something any time of the day. Um okay, and then burg what is this word? Burglarious? Burglar with an I O U S at the end. Burglarious, that's an adjective. Wow, okay. And then uh, burglarious Lee is an adverb. Hmm. I love seeing weird versions of words that, uh, you know, the, the original word is so normal, but then the w- weird versions are ones that you never use, you never see. Burglarious. Does that mean like that, uh, that house is very easy to be burglarized? It is burglarious? Hmm. Okay, next we have burgle. B-U-R-G-L-E, transitive verb from 1870. Uh, The synonym is burglarize, and this is just a back formation of the word burglar. Next, we have burgomaster, B-U-R-G-O, and then the word master. It is all one word. Noun from 1592, the chief magistrate of a town in some European countries. And the synonym is mayor. So here in America, we have the mayor, who is the head of the the leader of a town. Um, But then I guess in uh, some European countries, they have somebody called the burgomaster. They are the master of the burg. Makes sense. Uh, Yeah, I'm looking at the etymology. It is a part modified, part translation of the word Dutch word burgemeester, which is burg, uh, which means town, plus meester, which means master. Although they don't probably say meester, although that's how it's spelled. Uh, Next, we have burgonet. It is B-U-R-G-O-N-E-T, noun from circa 1567. A close-fitting 16th century helmet with cheek guards. And there's a picture of a burgonet. And yeah, it just looks like a helmet with a big flappy parts that come down from the helmet and then they connect down by the neck. Uh, so it just gives you more protection, although the face is completely exposed, so that's not very helpful. But it's better than nothing. Uh, okay, next we have Burgoo, B-U-R-G-O-O, noun from 1700. One, mm, tasty, oatmeal gruel. It's Burgoo. Number two, hard tack and molasses cooked together. I don't know what hardtack is. Might have to look that up. But it's a hardtack and molasses cooked together. Probably tastes great. But if the first definition is anything uh, similar, uh, then it might not be so great. 3A. A stew or thick soup of meat and vegetables originally served at outdoor gatherings. That's not very specific. Uh, 3B. A picnic at which burgoo is served. The origin of this is unknown, uh, so that's sad. I wish I wish we could have some more information on that. I want to learn more about burgoo. Uh, maybe I'll have to do some extra research. Next, we have burgundy, noun from 1664. Number one is often capitalized. A red or white unblended wine from burgundy. And then also a blended red wine produced elsewhere. Uh, So that is from Burgundy, which is a region in France. Uh, But then we have number two, a reddish-purple color, which is probably very similar to the uh, red wine. Next, we have burial, B-U-R-I-A-L, 
this is a noun from the 13th century. One, synonyms are grave and tomb, T-O-M-B. Number two, the act or process of burying. This is from Middle English, burial, burial. It is a back formation of burials, uh, which is taken as a plural from Old English, birgels, akin to the Old Swedish, I think, uh, bergisli, which means tomb, from Old English, birgon, which means to bury, and there's more at the word bury. Uh, I should specify, berry is spelled B-U-R-Y. It sounds like the berry that you eat. This, just this morning, I learned that the pumpkin is a berry. Did you know that? Also, like, eggplants are berries and uh, uh, cucumbers are berries. Fascinating stuff. Okay, next we have barrier, B-U-R-I-E-R, noun from before the 12th century, and this is just one that berries. So if your dog is burying a bone in the backyard, they are a barrier. Maybe they're a terrier that's burying, so they're a terrier barrier. Oh, I don't know what happened there. Um, I had another thought of some combining some words. It was burglar or something. I don't know. It's unimportant. Okay, next we have the last word for this episode is buren or just barren. B-U-R-I-N, noun from 1662. One, an engraver's steel cutting tool having the blade ground obliquely to a sharp point. So it's a it's a knife. Uh, number two, a prehistoric fl- flint tool with a beveled point. Uh, that is a buren. So we had Burgess, Berg, Burger, Burglar, Burglarize, Burglar Proof, Burglary, Burgle, Burgomaster, Burgonet, Burgu, Burgundy, Burial, Barrier, and Burin. Uh, Well, just to have fun with the words, uh, I'm just going to pick Burgu. I like that word uh, as the word of the episode. Thank you very much for listening. This has been Spencer Dispensing the Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the Dictionary. This is my podcast where we talk about everything very, very slowly, just like life. I don't talk slowly. I think I talk kind of fast, actually. Uh, But this podcast is very slow. So the first word is burka, B-U-R-K-A. It could also be B-U-R-Q-A. This is a noun from 1836, a loose enveloping garment that covers the face and body and is worn in public by certain Muslim women. This is from Urdu and Persian and Arabic. Um, And then it says Urdu again. Why does it say Urdu a second time? Uh, That word is burqa from, although I might be pronouncing it badly, uh, from Persian burqa, burqbu, yeah. um, It's just various forms of that word from different languages. Uh, the, the, there's been a lot of talk about this recently. This was not a word that I knew of, you know, n- not even all that long ago. And then obviously, you know, with lots of talk about this um, in the Middle Eastern world and how badly women are treated over there, um, it's it's definitely become a thing. Uh, n- now there's a, a thing called a burkini, which is like they say it's a bikini but it's got a burqa on it but i also still think that it they still covers most of their bodies so i i think adding kini at the end is a little bit weird um but i love the fact that you know there is a swimsuit designed for women who who wear burkas and um like to cover themselves up um but you know that world is changing um and that, you know, pe- women are now being allowed to drive in certain countries, I think. And it's, uh, it's it, you know, it, it changes slow. Just like I said, this podcast is slow. Life is slow. Change is slow. Um, but it is it is happening. And I, I hope, I mean, obviously, if people have very strong religious feelings and they want to wear these, obviously, that's totally cool. But it does feel to me a little repressive in a sense, you know, so I, I do hope that if anybody feels repressed by this in any way that, uh, they should figure out a way to, um, be who they are and live their truest life. Um, but again, like I said, 
If you're all into the burqa, wear the burqa proudly. And and if you are one who is judging somebody for that, please don't. Because why? Just why? 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 Okay. Next word is burk. B-U-R-K-E. Verb from 1829. Uh, looks like it is only transitive. Number one, to suppress quietly or indirectly, as in burk an inquiry. Number two, synonyms are bypass and avoid, as in burke an issue. So this is from burke, which means to suffocate. Uh, this is from William Burke, who was an Irish criminal uh, who executed for smothering victims to sell their bodies for dissection in 1829. Uh, what? He was a criminal executed for smothering victims to sell their bodies for dissection. Okay, uh, so let me look at these definitions again. To suppress quietly or indirectly. So what, did he, Did are they saying that he suppressed them quietly or indirectly while he was smothering them? And that's where they got this burk? What? Um, also, bypass and avoid. I'm not entirely sure how this word was connected to this guy, but it is somehow. Uh, okay, yeah, I mean, I guess suppressing and suffocating are sort of similar. Uh, okay, moving on to Burkitt's lymphoma. Burkitt's is capital B-U-R-K-I-T-T, apostrophe S. Uh, so this is the lymphoma of Burkitt. No, it is from a guy uh, who we will get to in a second. But this is a noun from 1963, a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma of B cell origin that occurs especially in children of Central Africa and is associated with Epstein-Barr virus. Uh, Yeah, so this is from Dennis Parsons Burkett, who was a British surgeon who died in 1993. So yeah, he probably, um, you know, found that this one was, you know, its own version of lymphoma and he got to name it after him. This sounds terrible. I mean, any kind of lymphoma, any bodily problem is terrible, but the fact that it's usually in children just makes it that much worse. Burkitt's lymphoma. I hope none of you ever get this. Next is Burl, B-U-R-L, noun from the 15th century. Uh, One, a knot or lump in thread or cloth. Number two, a a hard, woody, often flattened, hemispherical outgrowth on a tree. Uh, to be veneer made from burls. So this is from, let's see, Anglo-French or uh, Anglo-French bourle, which is a tuft of wool from, uh, oh, here, the Latin word bura comes up again, which is shaggy cloth. That's the third time we've seen that in like four episodes. Uh, okay, next we have burladero burladero b-u-r-l-a-d-e-r-o this is a noun from 1890 a wooden shield near the wall in a bull ring for bullfighters to take shelter behind if pursued well i mean that's kind of that's kind of cheating or lame or sad i don't know okay uh this is a spanish word from burlar which means to make fun of, elude, uh, from burla, which means joke. So, interesting. I I can only imagine that this means that when a bullfighter goes to take cover in this burladero, this shelter, uh, this shield, that when they do that, then the, um, the crowd is making fun of them or making a joke out of them. I don't know. Uh, you know, if if they have to get to the point where they have to take cover in the Berladero, um, that they are sort of the the joke, the butt of the joke. I don't know. That's the only thing that I can think of at this moment. Next, we have burlap, noun from circa 1696. One, a coarse, heavy, plain woven fabric, usually of jute or hemp, used for bagging and wrapping and in furniture and linoleum manufacture. Uh, Number two, a lightweight material resembling burlap used in interior decoration or for clothing. I feel like it's it's funny that burlap became this sort of cool thing to like wear or put up in decoration. I mean, wasn't it just like bags for potatoes or something originally? 
uh, and then it's like, oh, now it's trendy to to have that up in your place or to wear a burlap bag. Uh, I could be making that up. I don't know. Uh, all right, next we have burled, B-U-R-L-E-D, adjective from 1924, having a distorted grain due to burls. And of course, those are the hard, woody, often flattened hemispherical outgrowths of a tree or something like that. Next we have burlesque. B-U-R-L-E-S-Q-U-E. This is the first form noun from 1667. One, a literary or dramatic work that seeks to ridicule by means of grotesque exaggeration or comic imitation. Uh, I guess I've probably heard burlesque used in that way. That is not what I normally think of it as. Um, but I will try to remember that sometimes burlesque is that. Um, and then, so let's see, we also have number two, which is sort of similar, mockery, usually by caricature. And number three, theatrical entertainment of a broadly humorous, often earthy character consisting of short turns, comic skits, and sometimes striptease acts. Uh, yeah, that's more of what I think of when I think of burlesque. Um, and it's a whole combination of uh, comedy and music, I think, often, and, and things like that. Uh, and then it says to synonym is the word caricature. So this is from the word, I mean, it is the word burlesque, which is an adjective. Uh, it means comic adjective. No, that's not what the ADJ means here. That must mean something else, right? Uh, maybe it just means adjective. Anyway, uh, so it, it, it means comic or droll, uh, from Italian burlesco, uh, which which from burla, which means joke, uh, which is from the Spanish word. We had that before. Uh, so oh, interesting. Burlesque comes from just the word joke, pretty much. Uh, burlesque is also an adjective. Burlesquely is an adverb, and then we have the second form of burlesque. It is a verb from 1676. Transitive is first to imitate in a humorous or derisive manner. Synonym is mock. And then the intransitive says, to employ burlesque. Burlesker is a noun. Uh, when my wife and I visited, uh, we were lucky enough to go to Australia. And our very last night in Sydney, we took a tour of the Opera House, the Sydney Opera House. And while we were on the tour, they showed us one of the, the theaters there, because there's a bunch of theaters in that building. Um, they said, in this theater going on right now, because we were there during the day, uh, there is a burlesque show. And it was our last day, and we had time, and we didn't have any plans that night. So we said, hey, let's see if we can get tickets to this burlesque show. Uh, and so we did, and we uh, we went back for, for the show, and it was a lot of fun, and it was funny and entertaining, and uh, the music was great. The comedy was great. Um, it was it was re- really just a crazy fun show. A really good way to end the, the trip. Uh, boy, this is going to be a long episode. Okay, next we have Burley, B-U-R-L-E-Y, noun from 1874. A thin-bodied, air-cured tobacco grown mainly in Kentucky. Next we have Burley again. There's no E. Adjective from the 13th century. Strongly and heavily built Synonym is husky, as in a burly man. Burly, it's a funny word. That is an adverb, and burliness is a noun. Next is burr marigold. Two words, noun from circa 1818. Any of a genus of coarse composite herbs with prickly flattened achenes or achenes that adhere to clothing and fur. Uh, the genus name is bidens, which is funny because... Joe Biden has been uh, in the news a lot, you think? Uh, Okay, next we have Burmese, capital B-U-R-M-E-S-E, noun from 1824. One, a native or inhabitant of Burma. And then in parentheses, it says Myanmar. Number two, the Tibeto-Burman language of the Burmese people. Number three, any of a U.S. developed breed of slender, short-haired cats having gold eyes and a usually dark brown coat. So maybe I'll post a picture of this Burmese cat. Uh, and then Burmese is also an adjective. And then lastly, we have the word burn, B-U-R-N, first form. Second form will be in the next episode. Noun from before the 12th century. 
It is British, and we have the number two definition for the word creek, C-R-E-E-K. All right, I guess we'll learn more about that when we get to that word. Uh, But this is from Old High German Bruno, which means spring of water. So we had Burka, Burk, Burkitt's lymphoma, Burl, Burladero, Burlap, Burled, Burlesque, Burly, Burly, Burr Marigold, Burmese, and Burn. Well, clearly, I had a lot to say about a bunch of these. Um, I, I, I think I want to pick burka as the word of the episode because, um, I don't know, it just feels like it's such a symbol of something and there's a lot of, um, I feel like there's some divisiveness around it. Um, it's very political and uh, it, it shouldn't be. <laughs> it shouldn't be at all. Um, so, I don't know. That, uh, that's all I'm going to say. Um, yeah. That's that's good. We just finished page 165. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Yes, 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 you have turned on the most amazing podcast. Uh, it is the one where we talk about the stuff in the dictionary, which is all the stuff. So we are in the last few lines of page 165 with the word burn, B U R N. It is the second form. This one is a verb from before the 12th century. Intransitive is first. 1A, to consume fuel and give off heat, light, and gases. As in, a small fire burns on the hearth. 1B, to undergo combustion. Also, to undergo nuclear fission or nuclear fusion. Uh, By the way... This verb, verb form of burn has a lot of definitions. Uh, Let's see, now we are in 1C. To contain a fire, as in, a little stove burning in the corner. 1D, to give off light. Synonyms are shine and glow, as in, a light burning in the window. 2A, to be hot, as in, the burning sand. Ooh, yeah. Who you uh, you've all probably experienced this? Uh, you know the asphalt gets hot too, but typically you're more likely to be having no shoes on when you're in the sand, and man, it, that gets hot. It's been a long, long time since I ever stood on hot sand, but geez, that gets crazy. Uh, okay, to uh, be to produce or undergo discomfort or pain, as in ears burning from the cold. To see. To become emotionally excited or agitated as 2C1, to yearn ardently, as in burning to tell the story. I am burning to read you this book. Next is 2C2, to be or become very angry or disgusted, as in the remark made him burn. Uh, Now we are on 3A, to undergo alteration or destruction by the action of fire or heat, as in, the house burned down. Also as in, the potatoes burned to a crisp. Well, I like I like my things a little on the cook side. Uh, so, you know, as long as those potatoes are not like burnt, uh, not completely burnt, but you know, a little crispy, I like that. I like my fries when they're, you know, those small and crispy ones, those are real good. Um, when we make Brussels sprouts, there's always little leaves that fall off, you know, and that aren't part of the full Brussels sprout. And so we always uh, cook them about halfway through, you know, in the, in the in the oven. And then once they're cooked halfway through, then we, uh, I think we call them, we eat the crispy parts. We eat the leaves uh, because, you know, if you leave them in there any longer, they're just going to get burnt. So we eat those up so they don't go to waste. And then we cook the rest of them uh, to completion till they're fully cooked. Um, okay, so that was a little tangent about potatoes and Brussels sprouts getting burnt. Uh, now we are on 3B, to die in the electric chair. Oh, yeah, that's they. It's, that's a very bad way to die. Uh, okay, number four, to force or make a way by or as if by burning, as in her words burned into his heart. Number five, mm, to suffer sunburn. As in, she burns easily. Those super pale people burn easier than the not pale people. I'm just sort of in the middle, I guess. Um, Next, we have the transitive definitions. 1A, 
to cause to undergo combustion, especially to destroy by fire, as in burned the trash. 1b, to use as fuel, as in this furnace burns gas. 1c, to use up, synonym is consume, as in burn calories. Go exercise. Get your exercise in. You don't need to do much. Just a little bit every day or most days is all you need to have a really huge effect on your body. Go burn those calories. 2A, to transform by exposure to heat or fire, as in burn clay to bricks. 2B, to produce by burning, as in burned a hole in his sleeve. 2C, to record digital data or music on... An optical disc, using a laser. I don't know why I'm getting so yawny. Um, and that is, uh, the example is burn a CD. I don't know why that word burn got used. Uh, are you literally burning the information into the disc with the laser? I'm not so sure. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm curious about why they said burn. Uh, and then also to record data or music in this way as in burn songs onto a disc. 3A, to injure or damage by or as if by exposure to fire, heat, or radiation, as in, uh, no, the synonym is scorch, as in burned his hand. 3B, to execute by burning, as in burned heretics at the stake. That also seems like a really terrible way to die. Uh, And then also the synonym electrocute. 4A, synonyms are irritate and annoy, and that is often used with the word up, as in really burns me up. 4B, to subject to misfortune, mistreatment, or deception. Um, And that is often used in passive, as in has been burned in love. Sorry, the yawning distracted me. 4C, to beat or score on as in, burned the defense with a touchdown pass. Oh, and there are some phrases, burnable or other forms, I guess. No, so let's see. Burnable is an adjective. That is a thing that is able to be burned. That is most things in the world. Uh, burns, Burn one's bridges or burn one's boats mean to cut off all means of retreat. Burn one's ears means to rebuke strongly. Burn, I mean, I hear, I've heard of when your ear's burning, that means somebody is um, talking about you, but I haven't heard of this one. Uh, burn the candle at both ends means to use one's resources or energies to excess. Basically, you know, you're, you're doing a lot of work. You're, you're wearing yourself out. You're working constantly, uh, that sort of thing. And then burn the midnight oil means to work or study far into the night. Now we have the third form of burn. This is a noun from 1594. One, an act, process, instance, or result of burning as 1A, injury or damage resulting from exposure to fire, heat, caustics, electricity, or certain radiations. 1B, a burned area, as in a burn on the tabletop. 1C, an abrasion, as of the skin, having the appearance of a burn, as in rope burns. 1D, a burning sensation, as in the burn of iodine on a cut. Number two, the firing of a rocket engine in flight. Number three, synonym is anger, especially increasing fury. And that is used chiefly in the phrase slow burn. Next, we have burned out. Two words with a hyphen could also be burnt out. This is an adjective from 1816. One, synonyms are worn out and exhausted. Although for some reason it just says worn out and then it says also exhausted. Why why you gotta separate them? Uh, Number two, destroyed by fire, as in a burned out building. Uh, Next is burner, noun from the 14th century. One, one that burns. As, 1A, the part of a fuel-burning or heat-producing device, as a furnace or stove, where the flame or heat is produced. 
you have to make sure that you turn off your ovens and stoves and things when you're done with them. 1B, a device for recording data on an optical disc, the burner. Uh, Number two, an athlete who possesses great speed. Next, we have Burnett, or it could be Burnett. The emphasis could be on either syllable, B-U-R-N-E-T. Noun from the 14th century, any of a genus of herbs of the rose family with odd pinnate stipulate leaves and spikes of apatalus flowers. Apatalus? Apatalus? I don't know. Lots of fun words in this one. Odd pinnate. Uh, it's two words that are hyphened, so I think that just means an odd number of pinnate stipulate leaves. Apatapatalus uh, apat, apatap. A P E T A L O U S. Apatalus. I don't know. Sure. We must have read that before. Uh, let's see. The genus name is Sanguisorba. And this is from, um, basically, it's from the words that mean brown. And there's more at the word brunette. Next, we have burn in, two words with a hyphen, noun from 1966. The continuous operation of a device as a computer, as a test for defects or failure prior to putting it to use. Uh, so they're burn. it's like breaking it in. And then finally, we have burn in again. This one is two words, uh, transitive verb from circa 1939, to increase the density of, uh, during, to increase the density of during enlarging by giving extra exposure. And then in parentheses, uh, to increase the density of portions of a photographic print. That is an example of when you would be doing this burn in process. Uh, so, uh, during enlarging extra exposure. So I think it's, I don't remember if it's brightening or dar- darkening. It says giving extra exposure, which would make me think that it's to increase the density of during enlarging by giving extra exposure. Uh, but maybe that's a darker thing. See, I always get this confused because, you know, you're dealing with negatives and old photographs in the dark room, uh, which I never did. Um, I think it. I think it's darker. I think when you expose the photograph, the negative to the paper for a longer period of time, I think it actually gets darker. Uh, modern photo programs, you know, have they have these things called blend modes, um, where you can, you know, choose different mathematical ways of how the different layers will deal with each other. Um, one of them is burn in, I believe. Um, and I think it's a darker one, but I don't t- I don't use that one so much, so I don't know. Um, but no, I, l- I like that one because it deals with photography. So the words were burn, burned out, burner, burnet, burn in, and burn in. Uh, I'm going to pick the last burn in two words uh, as the word of the episode because it deals with photography, and that's cool. And uh, I never did deal with the darkroom stuff, but I think that uh, that would have been really cool to do. I didn't get into photography until more more so after college. Uh, that was a fun, great episode, don't you think? No, it was pretty bland. Um, all right, thank you very much for listening, and until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Apologies for all the yawns in the last episode. I do not know why that's happening happening um but it is you know later in the day it's uh i've been up for almost 12 hours so maybe that has something to do with it but let's see if we can avoid the yawns in this one okay the first word is burning spelled the normal way adjective from before the 12th century 1a being on fire yep this when you're burning you are being on fire now 1b synonyms are ardent and intense as in burning enthusiasm. Can't you tell I have burning enthusiasm for this podcast? 2a, affecting with or as if with heat, as in a burning fever. 2b, resembling that produced by a burn. Resembling that produced by a burn. I'm sure it makes sense grammatically, but not in my brain. As in a burning sensation on the tongue. Number three, of fundamental importance, synonym is urgent, as in one of the burning issues of our time. Uh, burningly is an adverb. 
Next is burning bush. Two words, noun from eight, uh, 1785. Any of several plants associated with fire, as by redness, as a, the second form of the word wahoo, W-A-H-O-O, so that's some sort of plant, uh, and then B, synonym is summer cypress, and C, a deciduous Asian shrub of the spindle family, or spindle tree family, having stems with corky wings and leaves that turn a brilliant red in autumn. Mm, definitely got to find this. So this, uh, the scientific name for this Asian shrub is Yon- Yonimus alata, something like that. Next we have burning gat. Two words, gat is G-H-A-T, noun from 1877, a level space at the head of a gat for cremation, but I still don't know what a gat is. Next, we have burnish, first form, verb from the 14th century. I think it's just transitive. 1A, to make shiny or lustrous, especially by rubbing. Uh, 1B, we have the number three definition for the word polish. Number two, to rub a material with a tool for compacting or smoothing or for turning an edge. Burnisher is a noun and burnishing is an adjective or a noun. And let's see, this is from Old French, brunier, which literally means to make brown for some reason. Next, we have the second form of burnish. It is a noun from circa 1647. Synonyms are luster and gloss. Next is burn off. Two words, verb from circa 1925. Intransitive is first. To be dissipated by the sun's warmth, as in waiting for the fog to burn off. And then transitive, to cause to burn off. Uh, Next we have... Burnous, Burnous, B-U-R-N-O-O-S-E, could also be spelled B-U-R-N-O-U-S. This is a noun from 1695, a one-piece hooded cloak worn by Arabs and Berbers, and burnoused is an adjective. Uh, Next we have burnout, one word, noun from 1940, one the cessation of operation, usually of a jet or rocket engine. Also, the point at which burnout occurs. Number 2A, exhaustion of physical or emotional strength or motivation, usually as a result of prolonged stress or frustration. Uh, we've all been there. 2B, a person suffering from burnout. Number 3, a person showing the effects of drug abuse. Next is burnout. This this time it's two words. A verb from 1710. First is transitive. One, to drive out or destroy the property of by fire. Number two, to cause to fail, wear out, or become exhausted, especially from overwork or overuse. And then intransitive just says to suffer burnout. Next is Burnsides, one word, noun from 1875. Uh, We have the synonym side whiskers, uh, side hyphen whiskers, yep. And then especially full mutton chop whiskers. And so I always thought it was funny because uh, this comes from Ambrose E. Burnside, who had these, if I remember correctly, we'll have to post a picture of this guy. If I remember correctly, he had these amazing uh, sideburns. But his name is Burnside. So what, What? first of all, why isn't the synonym sideburns in here? It just says side whiskers. Um, so that's weird. But also, when did the word get flopped? Why, when did it become sideburns instead of Burnsides? I don't understand this. Uh, maybe we should do some research. But anyway, if I remember correctly, this guy's got some amazing sideburns. So no no wonder they named sideburns after him. Sort of. Sort of. Okay, next we have Burr Oak. B-U-R, next word, like oak, like an oak tree. Noun from 1815. A usually large oak of eastern North America 
having oval acorns enclosed in a fringed cap and tough, close-grained wood. And the scientific name is Quercus macrocarpa. Next we have, oh, it's a good one. It is burp, B-U-R-P, first form, noun from 1929, the act or an instance of belching. Next we have the second form of burp. It'd be great if I had one in the chamber, but maybe we'll save that for later. Uh, The second form of burp is a verb from circa 1932. Intransitive is first, and we have the synonym belch. And then transitive, uh, we have number one synonym, again, is belch. Number two, to help a baby expel gas from the stomach, especially by patting or rubbing the baby's back. Wouldn't you love to hear a 50-year-old large man's burp come out of a a baby's little mouth? Uh, Next, we have burp gun, two words, noun from 1943, a small submachine gun. Next, we have burka, B-U-R-Q-A, and this is a variation of B-U-R-K-A, which we read recently. Next, we have burr, B-U-R-R, first form, noun from the 14th century. Number one is usually spelled just B-U-R, so we have 1A and 1B with that. 1A, a rough or prickly envelope of a fruit. 1B, a plant that bears burrs. 2A, something that sticks or clings, as in a burr in the throat. 2B, synonym is hanger on. Hanger hyphen on. Number three, an irregular rounded mass, especially a tree burl, B-U-R-L. Four, a thin ridge or area of roughness produced in cutting or shaping metal. 5A, a trilled uvular, and then it says R with, uh, there's uh, the, the slashes on either side of the R, What does that mean, people? We are going to need to go look this up, um, but let's just get through this. So a trilled uvular, R, as used by some speakers of English, especially in Northern England and in Scotland. Um, So it's basically just, you know, a way to say the letter R in uh, other areas of the world. 5B, a tongue point trill that is the usual Scottish R. So is that like, Arr, arr, I can't really do it. I don't think it's the full trill. Arr, um, but arr, I can't think of an example of what they would say. But yeah, you know, you, you can hear it in your head. Um, now we have 6A, a small rotary cutting tool. 6B is also usually just B-U-R. A bit used on a dental drill. And then number seven, a rough humming sound. Synonym is Whir, W-H-I-R. Bird, with an E-D, is an adjective. This is from Middle English, bur, with an E at the end, akin to the Old English birst, uh, which means bristle, and there's more at the word bristle. Next, we have the second form of burr. This is a verb from 1798. Uh, intransitive is first. One, to speak with a burr. So that must be that R thing that they were talking about. Number two, to make a whirring sound. And then next is transitive. One, to pronounce with a burr. 2A, to form into a projecting edge. Uh, 2B, to remove burrs from. Uh, You know, when you're walking around in the forest and those little things stick to your pants or your shoes, or if you've got a a dog, they get stuck to their fur. Uh, Those are burrs, and then, you know, you got to take them off, and that's how they spread their seeds. Burr is a noun. And then finally, the last word is burr read. B U R, second word R E E D, noun from 1597. Any of a genus of herbaceous plants with glob- globus, globos, globos fruits resembling burrs. G L O B O S E. Globos fruits resembling burrs. Sure, why not? The genus name is Sparganium, which is of the family Sparganiaceae. So we had burning, burning bush, 
burning gat, burnish, burn off, burnoose, burn out, burn out, burn sides, burr oak, burp, burp gun, burka, burr, and burr reed. Well, you know, uh, yeah, I'll just pick burp as the word of the episode. I probably did that with belch. Can't remember. Um, I guess the backup would be, where was that other one? Um, we will pick uh, burn sides as the backup word of the episode in case I feel like changing my mind. Um, and with that, I will say, oh, there's a cool sunset peeking out the window. I can just see a little bit of it here. Um, yeah, with that, I will say thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye.